yo. Um, sorry, I, I would like to, I, I, I'm curious about, I, I read some place that dark chocolate or cocoa had some influence in micronuclei? No. Is that in um, uh, seeds? No. Seeds? No? It, it has some influence on the, the belly. endothelial function. Okay. Wow. So it's true that it, it, it does something? It does something, but not with bubbles. Okay, so it's good or bad, or it's the same, we get fat and that's it. <laughs> no, okay. <laughs> Remember what we said, okay? When you're vibrating the diver, you reduce bubbles, but nothing happens to the endothelium. Okay. okay? When you give chocolate, before diving, dark chocolate, yeah. it's good for the endothelium, but doesn't do anything with the bubbles. <laughs> okay. So, <laughs> and... A funny thing that works for both, and you never bet on that, was sauna two hours before diving was good for endothelial and reducing bubbles. But what is sauna? Actually, vibration is mechanical activity without cardiovascular activity. And sauna is cardiovascular activity without mechanical activity. You see? Okay. That's why we were using this, not just for fun and to do sauna <laughs> or something like this, but that was the idea. Okay, but then shivering with, with tremble as well? Uh, shivering might be useful, but you have vasoconstriction. Yeah, okay, of, of course. Yeah. So? Okay. And, and exercise, exercise before the dive. It's good if you're not in inflammatory phase. So we are, uh, I already explained that, so, yeah. but that's the idea. That's why some divers in the um, French army, they had to reduce their activity, physical activity, because they had too many of those problems because of dive. Okay, thank you. So we have another question. Yes, please. Uh, yes, uh, about nose breathing and mouth breathing. Yeah. Uh, in free diving, we, we found, or oh, I, I read in some places, that somebody found a difference in the uh, oxido nitroso. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's nitric oxide. Yeah. Exactly. And this stuff helps to absorb more efficiently the oxygen. Yes, and release oxygen and as well. And release uh, about the, um, the decompression illness in uh, scuba or free diving. You can, we can believe that nose breathing is better the, than we are, breathing? Honestly, we are starting a, a research program exactly on that. Okay. So that's a very good question. And uh, we are about to answer, but I don't have the data yet. But nevertheless, you're right. That's the nitric oxide. For instance, there are people that, are, that have uh, hypertension, not easy to cure, but we learned that they are oral breather during the night, not, not OZA, just oral breathers, because they are not using the nitric oxide that you produce in your sinuses and your uh, mucosae. So that's, that's exactly something we are working on right now. Nice question. Thanks. I will give you the answer in some months. <laughs> Next year. <laughs> yeah, so, hi, out here. Um, so you said inflammation Oh, aids, still for me. <laughs> okay. Inflammation aids the creation of bubbles, right? Which not only, not only, but it okay, can. It can, it which can. probably explains why diving on with a hangover is bad. Um, people often take anti-inflammatory medication to kind of reduce the effects of a hangover. You're talking. Does, does that kind of mean that? Okay. And inflammatories will help reduce bubble formation as well. Okay. A lot of people have, have tried a lot of different things before diving to reduce bubbles. Honestly, none of those have given a clear effect. None. Okay. Now we are trying to uh, understand what happened during diving and those micronuclei of second generation that could also be some microparticles that can be generated during inflammatory storms, maybe are also part of it. But 
I will never recommend to take anti-inflammatory uh, medications before diving, for diving. If you take it because you have a need that uh, has a problem, this is another problem. Okay. <laughs> I don't know okay. if, I, if you're... Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much.